<laughs> yeah, it's me again. So check it out. What I want to do with these screencasts is not to provide a word for word summary of the relevant lecture that the screencast relates to, but to provide more of a commentary and some reflective thoughts about the said lecture. The idea is to have the sort of commentary you find on DVD extras for films, the sort of commentaries that are provided by actors, producers or movie directors where they pass comment during the running time of a, a film. What I'll do here is to set out a commentary for Lecture 9 which is the second of a two-part lecture about cynicism versus utopian ideas concerning business ethics and this lecture focuses more on the utopian approach. And we started off the uh, lecture, what I did was start off by having something of a recap of cynicism, but a recap which um, eventually leads to some criticisms of cynical um, ideas, the dominant cynical ideas about business ethics and, and life in general. So we started off with a bit of a recap and I uh, looked at some of the um, key features, key philosophical and uh, social features of the ancient Greek cynics because the, the point I want to make here, the, what I was trying to do in this part of the lecture and what I tried to do in the cynic lecture on cynicism in lecture 8 was to focus on cynicism as a philosophy and certainly it was, a, uh, it was treated that way in ancient Greece and certainly that was the intention of the founder of cynicism, Diogenes and the cynics of course got their name from the nickname, the derogatory nickname for Diogenes um, which was dog kinnik, a Greek word which derived from the Greek word for dog which is kinnik But the point I wanted to make with these photoshopped, humorous photoshop photographs is that a certain amount of cynicism is healthy, especially when it comes to things like the use of performance enhancing drugs in sport, money laundering and the role of tax evasion by UK financial institutions, I think we, we should be cynical about these things and that a certain amount of cynicism is healthy because cynicism, the point I want to make here is that cynicism is important in that it helps us not to be duped by uh, those in authority or it prevents us. A certain amount of cynicism is important when it comes to actually avoid being conned. And we should also be cynical about the media. Have a look at this clip that I used. But the thing is, in fact, this is nothing at all to do with business. It doesn't mean jack shit, quite frankly. You are here to enhance some form of media career. That's what it's all about. But in the second part of this section of lecture, after outlining cynicism, I look at what I think is the chief problem of cynicism. While it's, well, I wanted to make the point, particularly in lecture eight, that a certain amount of cynicism is healthy and that it prevents us from being duped by those that want to set out to con us particularly those in authority the point is that cynicism has one great problem and I illustrate this by the 
by pointing to the figure of Karl Marx. And of course, on his grave, he has this famous inscription from um, from one of his writings, and it reads that philosophers should try to change the world. But the point about cynicism is that it leaves the world unchanged because it leads to a dead end. Cynics are there to criticise um, the world and those in authority and to uh, question the ideals of those that try to change the world for the better, question whether this can really be done. And to a certain extent that is healthy, but I wanted to show that this is ultimately problematic because it does lead to a dead end in that it doesn't seek to change anything. This is a major criticism of cynicism and the alternative to cynicism is this. taken is a exploration of utopia, Emerald City being a utopian city and we're going to look at that and look at the idea of utopias in more detail um, from this point of the lecture onwards.